All right, welcome back to Trimble Garage. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to install a Jeep YJ Bush Bar, uh, Bush Bar bumper uh, on your Subaru Sandbar. So I did this on mine. Uh, I've posted lots of pictures of it, a few videos, and I've had uh, an unbelievable response, people wanting me to show how to install it, lots of questions asked. So unfortunately, when I did do this, I didn't, uh, I wasn't putting out YouTube videos, and all I did was take a lot of photos. So what I've done is I've put all these photos in a sort of order uh, and uh, I'm going to show you, uh, hopefully, explain to you what I did and, and show you what, you, you know, if you want to do this on yours, what's involved. You're going to need a welder. You're going to need an angle grinder, uh, the ability to bend up some sheet metal. Uh, there's this one part I had to make that's uh, pretty important. Uh, but yeah, so let's just get right into this and uh, show you what's involved. Hopefully it helps. So what I'm talking about is, is basically converting this truck when I first got it to this, which was the finished product with the nice bush bar on the front. So after I finished the rebuild of my little truck, this is what it looked like. Uh, it was all clean, front end all painted up nice and everything. And I looked too plain to me, so what I wanted was a, a front bumper. So this is what I picked up was a, a Jeep YJ bumper. I'll put a link in the video as to the, I bought it off eBay. Uh, and yeah, it's just a nice piece came shipped. Well, the next thing, what I did is I removed the front bumper assembly and this is what the truck looked like with all that removed. And the important thing to note here is that once you take the front bumper off, this hole is exposed and this is where your air for your ducts or heater controls and all that, this is the intake. And when the bumper's off, that is fully exposed. So this is. Uh, something you're going to want to cover up. So what I did was installed or what I, did, I made up a sheet metal uh, cover that is open in the bottom. So when this was bolted on with a foam gasket, um, the the air intake basically was below the bumper, the new bush bar bumper, and water wouldn't come up into the intake. Um, to bolt this on, what I did is I actually I drilled four holes into the cab and welded bolts poking through from the inside so that you could basically just use nuts and the studs are, are um, the bolts are held in place with the welds. So looking at the interior, uh, basically to do what I figured I needed to do is basically remove the whole dash and the uh, the heater assembly. And the reason to do that was to get at the firewall or the front of the cab I needed to put in a plate from the inside that would spread some of the weight uh, over the front of the cab I had to mount a bracket on the front of the cab and to hold that bracket I needed three bolts but I was worried just the three bolts held on just drilling a hole the cab the sheet metal is too thin so I made a plate that would disperse the weight or the force if you will over a larger surface area. And this is what you can see, it's it's painted up. I welded the nuts on. And then inside the cab, there it is right there, I've welded up, uh, drilled the holes in the front of the cab and pushed those into place. Uh, and then it was just a matter of um, painting the cover plate or that plate up and putting it in place. So it was a low profile and it would uh, still be able to get the heater box and everything in stock. So the next step was to figure out how I was going to construct the main brackets that hold the bumper. So I held the bumper up in place to the front of the cab and designed uh, a couple of brackets that I welded on to the uh, frame. So here you can see what they looked like. Uh, a couple of uh, pieces of metal flat bar. I bent them, uh, put a little supporting brace you can see coming from the bottom. I just welded it all together at the right height. And it was just a bit of you know a bit finicky to get it all done, but uh, that's what the bracket looked like. The main brackets, if you will, that hold the the bottom of the bush bar. So once those were done, uh, the next step was to because I did some welding on the cab, welded some bolts from the inside. It, it wrecked the paint. So and the, actually the the paint job that I did wasn't that great. So sanded everything down, masked it. I had a little makeshift spray booth. And I painted the front of the cab again so that it was all nice and perfect, which then led to the installation, final installation of the upper bracket. So this is the bracket that bolted onto those three big studs that came through that were supported with that plate. 
and you can see on the left side of that bracket the for the front of the cab is not flat there's a sort of a tapered part there so i had to grind that back or cut it and make sure that it fit nice and and, and tight to the cab and it's got two holes so basically that bush bar sat on top of that and the little brackets coming out the sides off the frame all together keep in mind this cab has got a two inch body lift on it so uh you know if you're going to do it on yours your bracket might sit higher up on the cab than mine because mine being the cab is lifted two inches uh that bracket is two inches lower than you might have on yours uh, again, with this, you can see the, the uh, sheet metal plate is bolted into place now and uh, the um, cover plate's all painted. This, I did that as well, painted that on the side and bolted it in place. So we're at the point now where we can install the bumper. So looking at the bumper, uh, you can see I used an angle grinder to grind the bumper to fit the contour of the front of the cab. And on this, you can see I've also got the winch installed. Here you can see just, you know, following the contour around that little cover plate that I made over top of the intake, uh, uh, the heater box intake. You can see where, why I had to do that because the bumper sat below that opening. So that's why that's there. And uh, yeah, here you can see one more with the, uh, the grinding and the contours all shown. Uh, so yeah, here you can see the bumper is basically sitting in place now. And uh, I'm, I was happy with that. This actually before I did the, uh, the full assembly, but you can see how it's mounted just below the headlight bezels there. That's where I thought was going off that line there. Um, moving on to the front bumper, time to install the front bumper, the factory bumper. I had to cut out, you can see the piece that I cut out that had to be removed so that you could uh, fit the, the bush bumper over top. It was just a you know, put it off and on and trim, trim, but basically that's what I had to remove. Um, and you'll also note the signal lights on the bumper, the factory bumper, they are covered up. So I had to uh, put signal lights into the bumper. Here you can see where I used a hole saw to drill a hole or cut out a hole in the front bumper for the signal lights. Uh, they're an LED light that's held in with a rubber grommet. You can buy them pretty much anywhere. So that pretty much was the last thing to do on the front bumper, tied that into the existing signal light wire. And then I moved on to the power for the winch. So for the, the, the winch, I wanted to run a new, a separate battery for the winch. And uh, on the trucks, there's actually a factory battery tray in here that's not utilized. Uh, the vans are the same and the van, this is where the battery is located. But with the coolant tank there, I couldn't get the battery in. So what I did is I removed the coolant tank and uh, I fabricated a little bracket to extend the coolant tank more towards the center of the vehicle. You can see it on here with a couple of spot welds. Uh, there it is again. And with, uh, with that in place, you can see here that I can squeeze a battery and you can still get the cap off the, the, fill, the radiator fill tank. Uh, it's tight, but you can still get it off, but it allowed me to put the battery in and basically run it parallel to the other battery. So I've got a little bit more amperage uh, to to run that winch if needed. Uh, so that pretty much did it. So here you go, that's the, uh, the, the end result of the, uh, the whole bumper assembly. And, and here this is the, with the, the wheels and tires that I bought uh, to basically finish off the look I was going for for my little truck that I call Mighty Mo. So there you have it. That's what's involved in installing a Jeep YJ bumper on your Subaru Sambar. It's a lot of work, but uh, in the end, very rewarding for me. I've had nothing but compliments on that little bumper on that truck. It seems to fit perfectly and gives it the look I was going for. So, yeah, thoughts and comments down below. Think about subscribing. And, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Have yourself a great day.